Oh, God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, we welcome you 
thank you so much for watching us we believe that you've, you've enjoyed the music we are going to worship jesus i believe that this is the day that the lord has for us to rejoice and be glad we welcome you thank you so much for giving up the time thank you so much for the sacrifice you've made I, 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 I don't know about you, but for me, to me, it's it's a privilege that you're giving us the opportunity to speak and minister into your life. As we remember Palace, we are so happy and we are glad in Jesus' mighty name. First of all, before we continue, I want us to first uh, to, to first welcome the, those of those of you that have just come and this is your first time to watch the classic hour with Pastor Maxon Wanyama. My dear friend, you are in the right place and you're doing the right thing. This is the time that you need to hear from men that God has blessed. This is the time that you need to hear from men that are that are bringing the message that is coming from the throne of grace. I want to tell you that this is your day and your life will not remain the same. Those of you that have been watching us, you've noticed we've been having great, great visitors that have always been coming to speak into our lives. And I believe your life has not remained the same different preachers were telling us their testimonies i want to tell you because of those testimonies i was so lifted i was so uh, my faith was lifted from one level to another and preachers have spoken into our lives but this week pastor maxon is here and he's going to speak into your life and we've always been cheer and he has he has taken it forth from sunday to man from sunday then monday today the holy spirit just be ready to receive from the man of god get your notebook get your bible get your pen put them around you because you are getting wisdom and this wisdom is not it is not just mere wisdom but this is the knowledge that is coming from the altar of grace from the throne of grace hallelujah i want us to surrender ourselves to surrender our souls and call upon the holy spirit to come and dwell with it in Jesus' mighty name we believe that god has the answers to all the questions that we have to all our problems. We believe that God is so great and so worthy in Jesus' mighty name. Just rise up wherever you are. You can walk around. You can, you know, you can do anything. You know, when you're worshiping God, you can wave your hands. You can move around. You can hold your child. And they also learn that praying is part of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless you. We magnify you, we glorify you. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord of King of Glory. Would not be anything if at all it wasn't for you. We would not be here if at all it wasn't for your grace. We would not be like this, Lord of King of Glory. If at all you had not loved us, Lord Almighty. We honor the love that you've given to us. We honor the time. The, the, the breath that you always give us, Lord, O King of Lords. And for that reason, we come to you today and we are saying, Lord, you are mighty, you are holy. We glorify your name, we exalt you, we worship you. We say that you are worthy, you are holy, you are mighty, Lord, O King Almighty. For the Lord, and this moment, Lord, O King of Glory, we give it into your hands. We give it into your into you, Lord, to you, Lord, O King of Glory. May you come and speak to us. May you come and minister to us. Jango we reseje tuli kabaka wawa kabaka jango yo gereje tuli jango this is the day that you have made. We don't want to go to zero or to one day. To just go to zero, I take Kabaka away. This is the day that you have made. We don't want to go to zero or to one day. To just go to zero, I take Kabaka away. This is the day that you have made. We don't want to go to zero or to one day. To just go to zero, I take Kabaka away. This is the day that you have made. We don't want to go to zero or to one day. To just go to zero, I take Kabaka away. This is the day that you have made. We don't want to go to zero or to one day. To just go to zero. Abantu ne basumulwa kabaka wa bakabaka ku mulundi guno wabe wa sumulwa wabe wa wabe wa adzibo obujja some people's lives have been put down some people's businesses have been put down they do not know what to do but this is the time that they need you this is the time that they need to hear from you father may you come and speak to us may you come and minister to us may you come lord of king of glory and speak into our lives lord of king of glory through your servant pastor max lord of king of glory we pray for him lord almighty may you bless him with the spirit of wisdom. May you bless him with the Holy Spirit, Lord, O King of Glory. May you bless him with the words of encouragement. May you give him words of em of empowerment, Lord, O King of Glory. For we believe that because of a word, something can be changed. The Bible says that all things were created by just speech. Mere speech 
created the earth and the heavens. Me a speech created the plants that we see. Me a speech created the landforms that we're seeing, Lord, O King of Glory. And we believe that by that word, things happened. By the word, we were made, we were created. And we were given breath, Lord, O King of Glory. And Father, we believe that by your word, our lives cannot remain the same. By your word, things are going to be created into our lives. By your word, Lord, O King of Glory, things are going to change in our lives, Lord, O King of Glory. And your word may not come in a thundering voice. Your word may not come to us with, with, with that strong voice and that scaring voice. But your word is coming to us this afternoon through your servant, Lord, O King of Glory. May you bless a word that is going to lift someone up from wherever they are. May you be, bless a word in his, on his lips, Lord, O King of Glory, that someone will rise up and believe that Jesus is Lord. But the Lord, may you bless a word unto the, unto the lips of your servant that when he speaketh, lives are being transformed. When he speaketh, people's people's businesses are rising up when he speaks people are being lifted from wherever they are from their sick bed from them from their wheelchairs someone is throwing those clutches away someone is rising up and they're saying because the man of god has said that everything is going to be possible i'll rise up and go wherever i have to go i'll rise up and think about that business i've always, I've always not thought about i believe that because of a word people's diseases can be healed lord o king of glory but the lord there is someone out there that is suffering with cancer, that is suffering with diabetes, that is suffering with HIV, and they just need a one, a word of faith, a word that is going to lift them, to lift them up from wherever they are. Lord, O King of Glory, may you speak into that person's life. But the Lord, may you heal that person. But the Lord, may you deliver him. May you deliver him, Lord, O King of Glory, in Jesus' mighty name. But the Lord, we speak healing into that person's life. We speak healing into that person's life. One that has been suffering with COVID-19. You may not be on your sick bed, but you could be in a quarantine. You could be kept somewhere and you've been isolated just because your has came out COVID-19 positive. But I want to speak into your life. This is the time that you need to hear from the throne of grace. This is the time that the only thing around you is your phone. That just, that just because of your faith, you've turned on and you're watching. And we just want to speak words into your life. That the reports that the doctors have written are not the true you, are not describing what is going on in your life. The report that, the, that, that, that God has for you is that you will be healed. By his stripes, you are healed. Just raise up, believe that you are healed. Believe that nothing is going to challenge you. Believe that nothing is going to put you down. The report of the doctors is not going to put you down. The report of the nurses is not going to put you down. Everyone is, is around don't be scared. Do not be worried. Do not be this. I'm here to tell you one word. Smile and rejoice. Jump around your room and believe God that the next morning you will be glad. The next morning you will rejoice. The next morning the reports are going to change from positive to negative. HIV positive, HIV can be healed. Cancer can be healed. Malaria can be healed. Diabetes can be healed. Leukemia can be healed. It's just a matter of believing. Just be like this man who was walking around the city and he heard, he just heard that there is a man. There is a man called Jesus that man can heal diseases. When that man touches you, your life cannot remain the same. And the man just watched the crowds as they were coming. He saw Jesus. Jesus was surrounded by a lot of people. Jesus was surrounded by very many people. Just as you're surrounded, everybody's saying, my dear, just be ready. My dear, just prepare yourself. My dear, prepare yourself for surgery that is coming to you. My dear, pre pre prepare yourself for ARVs, a very hard, uh, the, the, the very, the, the very terrible, terrible medicines. You need to eat good. You need to feed very well. You need to take a lot of milk. My brother, my sister, the son of David is coming into your life. The son of David is passing by. Just shout to him and tell him that, Father, son of David, Jesus, come and touch me. Come and heal me. Come and deliver me. Come and change my life. Come and heal me, Lord. Everybody is saying negative one. But Jesus, this is a time that I need to hear from you. Father, this is the time that I need to hear from your one, from your servants. This is the time that I need your healing. This is the time that I need your touch, Lord, O King of Glory. Just call upon him. He is there and he is listening. The Bible says that call and you and you will be answered. Knock and you will be opened for. Just call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord for your healing. Call upon the Lord for your deliverance. Call upon the Lord for your provisions. I believe that by this time, you need the provisions that are coming from the throne of grace. You need provisions because the people around you may not have what you need. The people around you may not give you what you need. Maybe they have portion. Maybe they have beans. But all you need from God is milk. May God touch someone for your provisions. May God touch someone for your healing. May God touch someone
your life. If they don't come with a wand, let them come with finances. If they don't come with finances, let them come with wisdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we believe that you can be healed. We believe that you can be changed. We believe that your life cannot remain the same. If Jesus is in the boat, the Bible says that the disciples were on the boat. Then they and the storms came and they're almost overtaking them. Everything was a mess. They tried and cried out. They cried out. They cried out to, 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 to Judas. And she and he had no answer. They cried out to John and they had no answer. But because they had forgotten that there is a man that is in the boat, this is the time that we have to call the man that is in the boat. That man Jesus is with you. That man Jesus is, is with you. The Bible says that Jesus is in us and us in him and the Lord Father in him. The Bible says that when you believe that Jesus is in you, things will work out. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Why would you let the body, the temple of the Holy Spirit to be tormented by disease, to be tormented by, by sadness, to be tormented by weaknesses, to be tormented by challenges? I want to tell you, it is just a matter of believing. It is just a matter of believing. For the Bible says, faith is the substance of things not seen and the evidence of things that are not seen. You may not see your healing come to you. You may not see your body shaking and like as if you're getting delivered. You may not see yourself moving around. You may not see yourself living, rising up from that chair. But it's just a matter of believing. Believe even when you don't see it. Believe it even when you don't feel it. Believe it even when it's not coming to you. This is the time that you need to hear from the throne of grace. This is the time that you need to rise your faith. This is the time that you need to believe that the man that is in the boat has everything that I need. The man that is in the boat has authority to has authority over the weather changes. He has authority. He can speak to that mountain, move from there and go to the other place. He can speak to that lake. Please settle. I don't want to see the storms. The man that you have in your boat is Jesus and he has authority over everything. My brother just wants you to believe. My brother just wants you to rise up. My brother just wants you to believe that the Jesus that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. He can heal you. He can change your family. Maybe you've been tormented. Maybe your whole family has denied you because you believe Jesus and for them they are believing in something else. This is the time that Jesus is going to show them that I am greater. I am greater. I am the Jesus, the Jesus of Nazareth, son of the almighty God. This is the time that the word of God is going to be manifested in your life. This is the time that your life is going to be transformed. You will be a testimony in the future. You will be a, tes a testimony tomorrow. I want to tell you, it is not about what is going on now. It is not about what is going on in the country. It is not about what is going on in your life. It is not about what blessed in your family. But all I want to say is when you believe Jesus, things can work out. Just believe Jesus with me. Call Jesus. Tell him that Father, I am here to receive from you. Father, I am here to touch me. Father, I am here. I want you to heal me. I pray that you may change me. I pray that you may deliver me. I pray that you may heal me. I pray that you will transform me, Lord, O King of Glory. For the sake of my marriage, for the sake of my children, for the sake of my father, if someone is out there and they are crying, they have been told that your father is your father is going to die. He has done all that is possible. He has been taken for it because of cancer. But I want to tell you, radiotherapy can change someone's life, those that do not believe. But this is the time for you to believe that where radiotherapy failed, it is Jesus that works. Where doctors fail, Jesus is called upon. Where nothing seems to work out, Jesus comes and makes things work out. I want you to believe with me that Jesus can heal your father. Jesus can heal your mother. Jesus can heal your daughter. Jesus can heal your parent. This is the time that I want you to believe that Jesus is the great healer. Jesus is the great transformer. Jesus has all that you need. It's just a matter of believing that my father owns everything. That my father has everything. The Bible says that Jesus, the, 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 the Lord, that owns all the things that is in the world. All the wealth is in the, that is in the world belongs to him. It's the only one that we need to call upon if we need provisions. This is the time for you to call God for your car, for your business, for your job, for everything that you need. This is the time for you to call Father. This is the time for you to call Jehovah. Call him and tell him, Jehovah, the quarantine came. COVID-19 came. I never had a job. COVID-19 came. I never had a business. COVID-19 came. I had nothing. 
and in fact others are complaining because their businesses have been shut down but for you you're not complaining you actually rejoicing because you are like I wasn't the only one but this is the time for you to call the father call Jehovah tell him Jehovah I need a business Jehovah I need a job Jehovah my degree is under my bed it is not bearing fruit Jehovah I need you to come into my life call him and tell him that father come and change me father come and heal me father come and deliver me father come and provide for me but the Lord open the doors of heaven open open the windows of heaven I just want to hear you I just want to get a new job I just want to get a new business maybe you are there and you have been barren for years but this is the time I want to tell you this is the time for you to call the father just call upon the Lord tell him that father I need children father I need children this is the time for you to call the father tell him that father may you come Lord of King of Glory touch me Lord of King of Glory touch my uterus Lord of King Almighty I've been told the my ovaries cannot produce but this is the time for you to call Jesus tell him that Jehovah I need children Jehovah I want to be a mother Jehovah I want to be a father this is the only time you have my brother my sister we only have a few minutes to go but it's just a matter of believing just believe the Lord with me and raise your faith wherever you are you may not pray the Lord prayer that I'm making now but I just want you to believe you can even start calling Jesus and tell him that Jesus I need a baby tell him that Jesus I need a healing tell him that Jesus I need a child tell him Jesus I need a husband maybe you're there and you've been denied by everyone but this is the time that God is bringing to you a man that is going to do things in your life a man that is going to transform your life a man that is going to be a testimony in your life and everyone will wonder how did she make it how did things work out for her this is the only time you have my brother my sister out there just believe the Lord with me just believe the Lord with me you can choose to walk around your room and believe with me you can choose to wave to the Lord and believe with me that Jesus can heal you that Jesus can change your life that Jesus can deliver you for the Lord we bless you we exalt you we glorify you we magnify you Jehovah you are worthy to be exalted you are mighty Lord O King of glory there is no one like you Jehovah thank you for you have done it for the Bible says that when you pray believe that you have received from the Lord O King of glory we believe that we have received our miracles my brother out there believe God for your healing thank him tell him that Jehovah I thank you for being healed thank that tell him Jehovah thank just believe the Lord with me and tell him that Father, thank you for you have changed my situation. Father, I thank you for my new job. Father, I thank you for my new car. Father, I thank you for my new house. I've been renting for so long, but I'm believing that after this, after this, I'm going to have my house. This is the time that I want you to believe. Maybe you've been told me you've been you've been sucked from your job. Maybe you've been cut off, but this is the time that you need Jesus. This is the time that you need to bless Jesus and thank him for he has done it for you. As long as you've been praying this prayer, I want to tell you that your life will not remain the same. Father, we bless you, we exalt you, we glorify you. Thank you, Jesus, for you have healed. Thank you, Jesus, for you have delivered. Thank you, Jesus, for you have come. You have come to us. Father, Lord, may you come and speak words of encouragement to us. Father, may Lord, may you come and check the situations. Father, Lord, may you come and deliver us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can thank him with a hand clap. You can thank him while you're waving. You can thank him while you're walking around your room. I don't know what it takes for you to, 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 to believe that someone is grateful. But what you want people to do for you, just do it to the Father. For the Bible says, if you say that you love the God that you do not see, if, if you say you love the Lord that you do not see, how comes that you do not love the enemy, that the neighbor that is before you just the way you want people to believe to bless you just the way you want people to worship you and, uh, and say thank you to you do the same thing and thank jesus just thank jesus for your healing thank jesus for deliverance thank jesus for the provisions he has made you do not know what it takes for someone to breathe like you you do not know what it takes that there are people that in the ox that, 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 are, that are in intensive care and they believe with me and they breathe with machines this is the time for you to thank god and tell him that father thank you that i'm not on a machine but i'm breathing thank you father that my heart can function normally thank you father that in my veins i do not have clothes thank you father that you have protected my children thank you father you have protected my family you don't know what it takes for people to be protected presidents have armies they have police around them they have great men that protect them but for you you've been alive you've been protected even when you don't have a 
security gathered at your, at your fence. You don't have anything around you. You could even be there and you don't have a fence around your house. But did it, God has been protecting, protecting you. It is God that has always been there for you. It is God that has always been there. He's always with you. Maybe you've been closed in that house. Maybe you've been told that you are supposed to be isolated in your house. I want to tell you that there is only one man that can reach you at such a time as this. That is Jesus. He has come to you today. Just thank him for the opportunity that he has given you. Thank him for the words that he has bringing to you. Thank him for the opportunity that he has brought to you. Thank him for the revival center. Thank him for the back that is protected. You do not know what it takes for him to be okay. But it takes God. He comes and he protects him. He walks with him. And at the end of the day, he gives him words of encouragement to speak to you. You do not know what it takes. But I just want you to thank Jesus for the man of God that stands before you every day. Thank Jesus for his life. Thank Jesus for his family. Thank Jesus for the provisions he has brought to the ministry. We will not be coming to you. We will not be reaching you wherever you are. But thank Jesus for technology. In Jesus' mighty name, bless him. Tell him, Jehovah, you are worthy. Jehovah, you are mighty. Jehovah, there is none other than you. We worship you. We exalt you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt you, Jesus. You are worthy to be exalted. You are mighty. There is no one like you. There is none like you, Jehovah Jireh. There is none like you, Jehovah Shammah. There is none like you, Jehovah. You are worthy to be exalted. You are mighty. There is no one like you. In Jesus is mighty name. O sani de, o sani da matendo, o sani de chitiwa, tata te ya kwenkana. Sani de, o sani de.
Tomar um acho que foi bem vindo nação. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh. Excess love, oh. Come on, sing with us. Worship him, Esther. Jesus, you love me. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You feel my love. So much peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my 
Come on, help me sing that. Help me sing that. Lord, I worship you. Lord. Pastor Richard, just to stand and say, sing that with us. Oh, Lord, I worship you.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome you once again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings and peace from above. I want to thank you, daughter Esther, watching from Namibia. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then uh, Frank is watching from Nansana. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching us. Pastor Rachel, God bless you. Pastor Chinto Richard. Chinto Richard. And all my friends are watching. Yes, for sure, a man is not a man to ever lie. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, today I'm gonna go real quick. And uh, I bet you're going to get what you need. I wish you got me that scripture of Luke. I want to clarify the scripture that they are fond of Uganda interpreted. Because by mandate, I'm supposed to clarify about the scriptures because it's my office. And it's one of the reasons why I can. You there? You there about the leprous guys? Is anybody there? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, wait. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I, I just believe we have to, uh, to, 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 to be right with the scriptures. We thank our beloved president for, the, uh, for yesterday's communication. That was very nice and powerful. Everybody waited. I can't believe it. We were waiting like we're waiting for the finals of World Cup from seven. <laughs> and we really expected the best. We still got the best. In disguise. But uh <laughs> I thank him for his communication. I want to encourage all of you uh, that are watching, especially if you're in Uganda. Uh, all of you Ugandans that are watching, and the ones that are watch later. I want you to take heed of the presidential directives. In the name of the Lord. You just need to take heed of his decrees. Uh, this is going to come to an end. And we want it to, end to come to an end in a, in, a, in a better way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So anyhow, Pastor James, you're here. Is anybody uh, with their Bibles open? I want you to get your Bible. And then we read the scriptures. Uh, we talked about the Holy Spirit, but I wanted to first speak about this, clarify about this. That's the most important thing as well. And uh, like we said, we don't know where the fathers. We have had fathers in this nation. We have, I hear we have fathers. We're spiritual fathers. It's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate that every time we speak, we as the young generation, we are taken as people who have disobeyed the fathers. We don't disobey. But if you refuse to speak, we will come out and speak. Thank you, you did a great job. No, they did. Oh My friend, can you set your mind? You did a good job. And we appreciate it. But we are worried where we are going again. It's very hard. It's very hurting. It's very painful. To see 
Okulabanti. Men that we call our fathers. Batata betu abasajja betu ita batata bafe. Comfortably go to the state house. Mungatewa ina na chebele ali kiramba gina mu state house. Eat and drink. Nebari ya nebanya. Get their transport refunds or their envelopes. Because I know it's given. Obama futa simanyo baba. And I wonder why they discuss about the church. It was very painful for a pastor like me. It was. For me to sit on the entire. Uh, 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 on my TV and then watch everything is being spoken about and nothing was mentioned about the church. Yes. When is the church? Where is the church? Where are the apostles? Where are the prophets? A nation perishes without a prophet. And every generation had a prophet. Now, if you keep quiet, we are going to speak. We are not rebellious, but we want to speak. I am a citizen of Uganda. And I am supposed, because I'm a voter, I qualify to speak about politics. At the same time, I am, I am, I am, I am supposed to clarify about the scriptures. It is, I mean, something has to be questioned. Do you speak about the church? What about us sitting? What about, uh, you know, let me tell you, pastors. It, this is tells me, why sit down? Why see other churches? Is it because other churches are congregating in 20s in numbers, 25 in numbers? We see it on TV. No, 20. I want you to mention the numbers because I've ever counted. This is something online, so it's in record. You have to speak the right thing. And then you, you gather 20 people in those churches. But when you find the pastors who are in the rural areas who are only gathering with five people. Five people who are like these are ministers they stay with, the police arrests them. Those big numbers, the so called big churches, you accept them to go. Are they are those that are special citizens and those who are not citizens in this country? This is not correct. Whichever office is concerned, treat the citizens of Uganda in the right way. And I'm saying it again. Where are the fathers? Where are the preachers? Where are the pastors who say they fought for many times for the church? Why not accept me if I have a church of 100 people? Why don't you let me have 20 people? The, the problem or the issue is all about social so distancing it's not all about you know we all fear the disease but again we don't have to take in fear faith is the opposite of fear let me have 20 people but have pray for the country we have prayed for this country we have prayed for this nation it's not just because because the, uh, the doctors have done their work. Yes, thanks and praise be to God. But doctors treat, but God heals. We need the church to be respected. We need to be respected. Hallelujah. Now, let me read a scripture that I want to bring out. 17.12, let me read it. Look. Look 1712. 
As he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, their lepers disappeared. Amen. Are you reading that? Yeah. Now, the thing is here. Are you reading? If you're reading, read faster. Luka kumina msambu nyo kumina bi. Awe ya ingi na mumbuga emu. Nebamu sika na aba tukumi, aba genge. Aba imire wala. Nebamu gene da waguru. Nebamu gambanti. Yesu mukama wafe. Otusasire. Buyalaba na wagambanti. Mugene mwela geni wakabona. Awe watu uka. Bwebali bagena ni walongo sebo. Now, you members of Revival Palace. Kati mwe awantu nga musa vila Revival Palace Center. And you Christians that are seeing and watching me. Na mwabaloko la wauliliza. Those in Uganda. Mwabali mu Uganda wano. Now, social distancing is for the thing for the corona staff and then the doctors and whatever. It is okay. Okwe wakavanga katonsembe da. It is cool. Naba sawo. Biaka huka kakona. Do it. Chikole. Do it. Chikole. Don't disrespect. To the doctors and the workers. But I want to clarify this. I found they came out and said this was social distancing. This was not social distancing. I found they have done what to not to come and when they have the social distance, yeah, social distancing. Eh, not yeah, social distancing. There is a difference between reverence, reverence, and social distancing. It's like when you respect someone, you come, you almost close to them. What do you do? Sometimes you humble yourself, you bow, you don't go just like that. So the, the, there is a difference between reverence and social distancing. If it was social distancing, then he would not have told them to go and show themselves to the priests. So I want to clear that. So, that was not a correct interpretation of the scripture. Well, the other things are right. That's why I don't talk about social sciences. I don't know about I don't know political science. But this I have to speak about. So the scriptures must be uh, must, must be interpreted in the right way. Hello? I know everyone is scared. You want to talk about this. You think you're going to be taken as a mother, as whatever, whatever. The thing is, the truth must be truth. The scriptures will remain. But okay, now I want to talk about the three kinds of persons. We have been speaking about the Holy Spirit. I see my sister Clarissa Breedlove. Thank you, my sister. Great minister of God. God bless you. Where are you watching from? In New Hampshire, okay. Uh, the, the three kinds of persons, the three uh, types of people. Uh, it's going to be a very short message. Today. Sister Penna, God bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Keep watching, my sister. Hallelujah. Okay. I am saying, I'm talking about the three kinds of, uh, the, uh, I'm talking about the three, the three kinds of, uh, the, the three types of people. people. And number one is called the natural the, the natural person. Oh, uh, If you want to read, you read First Corinthians chapter two. Let's do it real quick. First Corinthians chapter two. And verse number fourteen. But people who aren't Christians can't understand this truth from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them because only those who have the spirit can understand that the spirit what the spirit means. Na ye omuntu omu kubuka takiri za biyamoyegu wakatonda kubanga biyamu siru siru jari elata inza kubitegera kubanga bikeberwa na muoyo. 
Hallelujah. Amina. So we who have the spirit understand these things, but others can't understand us at all. Now, your passion is one that understands everything with his mind. He's not a born again Christian. Meaning his mind is not yet renewed by the spirit. And the word of God and the word of God, of God and the word of God, of course. Now, understanding, he does understand everything with his natural mind. Now, this leads him into operating through his five senses. In other words, so hard for him to trust God because he wants to first touch it. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not possible for him to live by faith because he wants to first see he cannot take God for, by, by his word. His feelings are different from what the word of God says. That's why that a natural person is it's so hard for a natural man to give to God. Because what he hears always is get more, receive more, save more so that you can get more. In other words, don't give. It's like baby gamble. The ones he receives are always like receive more so that you can have more. You need to get more. So it's like working hard to get more and more. But the natural man is so interesting because he finds. It's so simple to adapt logic rather than the truth. Amazima. Now this is your passion always, you know, he will always miss out something because he misses out on many things that are above the natural realm. The natural person will always miss out on things of the natural realms because he's just on feeling. That's why natural person cannot can a, a natural man cannot in any single day see the nat uh, the natural realm. He cannot see things in the natural he cannot see natural stuff. No, he cannot. That's what Bidaba. God bless you, Pastor Chuck Banker from Montana. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why we don't need to move as natural people. We will get somewhere. We need to be still spirit. We need to be spiritual. Romans chapter 12. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Amina. So a natural man cannot operate in the supernatural because he wants to see things the way they are, just in a simple way, you know. It's like when you live that kind of life, you are in a danger zone. That is a person number one. You don't want to be a natural person. Don't move with only your senses. We don't move by, uh, by feeling. We move by principles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, it's the second kind of person is called a kind of person. The canon. Now, let me read you. Get to the, uh, you want to find how to translate that person. Okay, canon person. Now, when you read Romans 8, chapter 5, Romans chapter 8 and verse 5, uh -huh, hallelujah. Romans 8, in chapter, uh, uh, verse number 5, to 7. Amen. Eight, five to seven. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. If your sinful, if your sinful nature controls your mind, there is death. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, there is life and peace. 
For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it will, it never will. Amen. Balumi munana tano. Kubanga abagobelo mubiri, balo oza bya mubiri. Naye abagobelo moyo bya moyo. Kubanga okulowozo ko mubiri kwe kufa. Naye okulowozo ko moyo bwe bulamu ne mirembe. Kubanga okulowoza ko mubiri bwe bwe bulabe eri katonda. Kubanga tekufugibwa mateka ga katonda, kubanga no kuyinza tegaka tega kuyinza. Now, a kind of person is one who is a born again Christian but, but refuses to be led by the Spirit of God and the Word of God. They are in church and they hear the Word of God. Hallelujah. They are in, and you know, they, but they refuse, they can hear and listen to the Word of God, but they refuse to operate the way the Word of God says. Even after getting born again, they still want to remain operating in their five senses. Now, Christians who refuse to be led by the Spirit of God, uh, uh, you know what happens? So their flesh leads them and guides them. That's why you find a Christian saying, I know God wants me to give. God's commands are this and this, but I will not do it. You know, it's like they know that giving is more blessing than to receive. And they know that when you give, you, you, God blesses you. But they still remain in church, come to church, do everything. But they say, I will not do it. <laughs> they know the principles, the precautions. It's not only about giving, but they know every precaution in church. But they refuse. They just say, I'm going to be there. I'm going to stay there, but I will not do it. So that's another kind of a dangerous kind of person. And don't be like that person. Number three. I told you I'm going to be short. Number three. Very precise today. Now Romans 8.1 Let's go back. Romans 8.1 8.1 Romans 8.1 so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So the spiritual person is a born again Christian. Who is living by the spirit, not his flesh. A spiritual person is a Christian who is governed by the word. Oh God. He does not operate to work like his five senses say. Hallelujah. He says, uh, you know what happens to him is that he doesn't do it because he feels it, but because the word says it. Amen. He may say that it may not make sense for me to give away, but it's still, if I give, I will receive. You know, he just says that those are the principles. The scriptures say it's more blessed to give than to receive. Such kind of people, even when you're praying for them in the church, when I'm praying for you right now, and I say, receive it in the name of Jesus, receive your healing, you take you take the opportunity and you grab it and say, I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. They don't begin to ask them questions, uh, questions like, how can this be? What kind of treatment is this? Which chemical? They don't go like that because they live by faith. You know, they only take it and say, as long as the Bible says it, I receive it, I partake it. Hallelujah. Mina. So such kind of people many a times who don't operate in the natural they don't operate in the natural realm. They take you to be a fool and those that operate in the carnal realm take you to be a fanatic and a, an extremist, but still you will make it. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are spiritual, when you are a spiritual person, things you do disturb others. That's why not your people or carnal people or carnal people those kind of people, they will think you are an extremist. Amen. Hmm? Amen. And you know, but such people don't look at that. They keep focused because that's what the Bible says. And that's why you don't need to be like natural people. Now, what leads you in the beginning will lead you to uh, will, will determine your end. If you are led by the natural person, it means you will walk and you will understand things in the natural way. You never understand the supernatural. And that's why you can't understand even the scriptures. Hallelujah. And if you, you are in a danger zone if you're led by feelings, because right now, the situation we are in, it takes a person who is taking on faith. It takes someone who sees beyond the world. It takes someone who understands the principles of heaven. Oh it takes somebody who knows that one time Elijah called off the rain and the Lord, at the other time, he made the land to be fertile. After the farming. Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't need to move in the natural situation. You need to move in the spiritual way. Don't you be a natural man? If you move by feelings right now, oh my brother, my sister, you are in a terrible situation. You're gonna have to change your mind. You're gonna have to change your thoughts. Change the way you see things. The time and the season we are in. We don't need to see our tomorrow. We don't just need to see today. We need to see the future beyond. And we must accept that all things. Things are possible through Christ who does it all. It is possible with him. Don't be a natural man. Hallelujah. Amen. Senses will deceive you. If you say you're going to do something because you see it, you're done. Hallelujah. I was talking to somebody and I told them I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna be flying to your country in August. And this person said according to the situation I, I don't I don't think we can plan anything. Come on, child of God. I I don't see where this thing is ending, but I'm seeing whatever I'm supposed to do happen. I am seeing my mission comes to pass. I am seeing praying for the people. I am seeing myself doing another thing, doing another curfew. Come on, speak. I am seeing myself with another curfew, casting out demons. I don't have a curfew with demons. I am attacking diseases. I am seeing my other crusades happen. I am not seeing those who are dying. Come on, I'm a champion. Something steps before me. I'm going to step on it and go ahead. What I'm seeing, I am not seeing a grave. But I'm seeing a future. I'm seeing people get healed. I'm seeing people get transformed. I am seeing people come back to Jesus. I don't want to see the impossibilities. I am not natural. That's why I tell people. I am made in heaven. I'm divine. I'm only assembled in Uganda. When Uganda does fake things, I feel bad. And I say, God, 
How I wish I was not assembled in Uganda. But let me tell you something. Don't begin to look like a natural person. Get to another level. Don't be a carnal person. Someone who is moving. You are in a church. You don't want to pick on the scriptures. You don't believe in scriptures. You are an unbelieving believer. Like the ones who are praying for Peter. They're praying in the house. And then a young girl comes back tells them Peter is here. And they're not accepting. What have they been praying for? The unbelieving believers. Those are the ones that come to church. You pray with them. You all raise your hand. You say, may the Lord bless us. May he shower his blessing over us. And when God blesses you, they begin to say, oh, he's a witch. Oh, he's done this. Oh, he's a coward. Because the unbelieving believers they are carnal people. But listen to me. When God is doing something, you are not going to inquire your enemies. You are not going to inquire from your brothers and your sisters. I say it's going to work with you. He begins with you because he knows your position. When God wants to do something, he won't go to call the entire church congregation. I tell you, even during this situation, even during this lockdown, God can do something for you. I said, God can do something for you. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on, you online say amen, amen, and amen. He can do something. He can do something. During this situation, it is a time to discover what souls. It is time to discover more things. It is time to get on another level. It is a time to understand the, the terrible moments. What can you do during the terrible moments? How do you survive during the moments of famine? How do you survive when others are dying? During the lockdown, it is a time for you, child of God, to do what you are supposed to do. Don't be carnal. You believe in the scriptures? You read scriptures? You come to church? Hallelujah. But you don't believe what they tell you. You don't believe the word of God. Come on, the word of God is God himself. The word of God is God himself. You have to understand. You have to believe. You got to decide. You have to say, no matter the situation, after all this is gone, I'm going to rise up again. I'm going to go on dry heart. I'm going to be different again. My business will come back. It will flourish. My ministry will rise again. I am not alone. Even when you're down, my father is with me. Even in the grave, he's with me. Me. Listen, why do you need to speak right now? I believe. You need to believe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Something is going to happen. If you don't want it, you will perceive it. I have told you, successful people, they are the ones that use tough moments, they use tough situations, and they get better. Hallelujah. So don't be a natural person. Don't be a carnal kind of person. But be a spiritual person. That walks and does stuff. No matter what is coming ahead of you. What does the scripture say? Huh? What do the scriptures say? What do the scriptures say? I know. This is what you say. I know countries are on a lockdown. I know Uganda is on a lockdown. But heaven is not on a lockdown. Heaven is open for me. Heaven is open for me. You better decide. You better decide. The Spirit of God to lead you. If the Spirit of God leads you through this special. You're going to go through it. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. So I just wanted to tell you to share with you about the three kinds of people. And I said one is a natural person. That one moves by the senses. And I told you the second one is a kind of person. Even when he comes to church and they say give, shall be given back to you. He just says, I 
know they say, I know the Bible says that, but I will not do it. Ajamu kansa na mugamba gaba, Bible gamba wogaba, chiku disiba na manyama, nyiba yubili che gaba, na hizi sige na chiko. And then another one is a spiritual person. Asemba ye mutuo wumoyo. And you have to decide to be that one. Elo teke do salawo kubero. Who moves with the principles, not by feelings. You know the scriptures say this, and I'm going to follow the scriptures. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you? Okay, let me pray wherever you are. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you so much, King of Glory, for this great evening or great afternoon. We thank you, Father, for the mornings in other countries. But I just thank you, King of Glory, that you've been with us and you've spoken to us. Thank you, King of Glory, because you knew us before we were creating our mother's wombs. And you're there in us, King of Glory. And now we hear, Father, speaking to your people, speaking to the world. Father, I just pray and raise my voice and say, King of glory, may you begin to change and transform these people that they will not be transformed by the standards of the world, but they will be transformed with the reality of the kingdom, the, the heaven is soul, and their minds will be conformed, will be transformed completely. In the name of Jesus, Father, they will begin to see the impossibilities as possibilities. Where there will be a problem, they will, up, they will bring up a God who solves problems. They will see their God as a bigger God than, the, than, than their problem. And yes, for King of Glory. Father, each one of them has a need. But you are a God that provides. Provide for them. Encourage them. Encourage them. Encourage them. We thank you, Jesus. In your mighty name. Uh, we want one again, once again to say thank you so much for watching us. Pastor Ronald Mobiro, thank you so much. It's Agnes and I want to thank everyone that is watching. I can't just mention all your names, but thank you for watching us. Uh, my friends, most of you in Uganda, you know the bills are high and you cannot even afford data for this time, but you still do it. Uh, that's the best. It's a decision you have to move in a spiritual way. And I just request you uh, to keep the focus. God is going to take you through this. I also want to encourage you and ask you if you want to, if you are blessed with this ministry, send your seed to support this ministry. Like you see, we use the lights and we use the internet and everything. So we need money. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit, but we also need money to run, to pay the bills, and do everything. So. We encourage you. We're also looking ahead to have a, a, a camera. We need another camera, so we will continue to go upgrade and get to a better level. Hallelujah. We thank you. We need a mixer. Uh, we are trying to use what we have at the moment. We are not. We are not going to give up, even when we are out of this lockdown. We will still remain streaming live on Palace TV. We love you so much. Remember, Palace TV, where quality matters. We are radically following Jesus. God bless you so much. I love you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forever. Amen. And may God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. I am not doing the prescriptions at uh, the realistic principles of life, but I'll begin to do them about the next week. God bless you. Love you.